Toucan Nailer Tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Polish. Hi guys! In today's video I'm going to be showing you the nails that I am currently wearing. They are toucans and I love toucans. I think toucans are amazing and I actually way back when I, I was at an event that Jack Hanna was at and he was and he had a toucan he asked for a volunteer and a, I volunteered and I got to feed the toucan grapes from about six feet away you just toss the grapes and the toucan caught it it was awesome he has the coolest I don't know really hollow sound when they click their beaks uh, that was a cute little toucan so really a big one anywho I love toucans I think they're amazing and I actually did a pretty I, I love it it's one of my favorite paintings of mine a painting that included a toucan and I'll put a link to that it's on my painting channel I'll put a link to the video in the description box below and I've also done a 3d toucan and I'll put a link to that video in the description box below too but this one is just a very simple toucan video. It's all very greens. It's very, it's almost monochrome. It's not quite, but it's, you know, just almost there. I, I like it. It's very simple. It's very clean looking. So I hope you guys like it as much as I do. And don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. To begin by painting all of your nails a mossy shade of green. So now to start out on my toucan nail or toucan nails, I did this on my index and my thumbnail. I'm going to begin with painting a green line across the tip of the nail for the little branch that he will be standing on. So that's just a line about where you would have your French tip but not don't necessarily make it that nice curve just a straight line and then with black paint I'm going to be painting my little toucan outline so I'm going to start with almost like a petal shape that's upside down well I guess depending on how you're looking at it but a petal shape so tapered and then kind of fatter in the middle and goes back down and then I'm going to be adding his beak and then adding the back of his head so this is all very um you know just very simple lines the best part about doing any sort of painting like this is especially if you can see it like this is you can really break down the shapes and when you can break down the shapes everything just goes a little bit easier sometimes it can be overwhelming to look at a design as a whole but if you you know if you break it down into the basic shapes it just goes a lot smoother and you can kind of you know figure it out so then I'm going to just basically be coloring in my little toucan so I'm going to start with in that bigger portion of the beak I'm going to be filling it in first with yellow and then I'm going to be blending just a slight amount of orange at the bottom to create a very soft little little gradient from orange to yellow or yellow to orange I suppose and then I'm going to be taking some blue and I'm going to be filling in that tip of the beak and then blending in just a little bit of yellow to highlight the top of it and now I'm going to go and I'm going to be filling in the area of the head feathers and then down the chest with some white paint so this is just, you know, like I said, coloring in the lines. After you have your lines in place, you can fill them in. However, if some of your lines go a little bit askew where they're not quite right, you always have the opportunity to touch them up when you are filling them in. So you can kind of fix things here and there if you need to. So don't ever feel too stressed at any point during a design that it has to be perfect. Nothing is perfect. I mean, it's you're doing something by hand. It, part of the charm is that it isn't perfect. So then I filled in his little toes with yellow and then filled in the rest of his body and his tail with some of that black. And I'm going to go back through with white and just touch up the head feather area just a little bit to kind of smooth out my lines some. Like I said, you don't have to be perfect at any point because you can always go back through and touch things up. And you know, nobody knows, I mean, you are the person that's going to see what you consider your flaws. So nobody else is going to notice them anyway. Then with orange paint, I'm going to be adding the little section right around where the eye is. They have brighter colored feathers right around their eye. And then with a thin black line, add the little line to separate their upper and lower mandibles on the beak. Add a little bit of an eyebrow almost around that orange section. And then a little spot for the pupil in the middle there. Just like that. And so then on my index finger, this is one of my absolute favorite designs and it's something that I have done several times on my nails. This uh, two frond nail is what I kind of like to think of it as. But I'm going to start with the two center, uh, the center bits of the frond. So just add those two lines kind of curving opposite directions almost, uh, you know, just like a baseball I guess kind of. And then add the little leaves going off of it. When you're doing this, make sure you add the leaves on the side of the frond that is the smaller curve. So if you look at it, there's like a bigger side and a smaller side. Make sure you do it on the smaller side first because if you add the leaves on the bigger side first, getting them to fit into the smaller side can be a challenge at times. I mean, it does work. And, you know, if you do it the other way, don't sweat it. It's not like it's going to ruin the whole nail, but it's just a little easier to do the smaller side first and then the bigger side. And now with a nice bright shade of green, kind of a limey green, I'm going to go through and add little highlights on my leaves to add just a little bit of dimension on it. If you want, the green paint I'm using isn't fully opaque, so it actually works out really well to add these little kind of streaky highlights. But to get this nice blended effect, if you don't have, a, if your paint is perfectly pigmented and it's just going to cover it up, go through and dilute it with some water before you start painting to give it this kind of softer appearance. 
Set on my middle and my pinky, I'm just going to be doing some black French tips. The funny thing with this design is my, in the beginning, what I was going for actually was I wanted something that was a color with black French tips. I don't know why, but that was like my goal to figure out a design that went with black French tips. So this is what I came up with. And so I did the first, the smile line with black paint, and then I filled in the tip with black gel polish. And now I'm going to be applying a layer of top coat over the whole shebang just like that. I love the way these turned out. The fronds, like I said, favorite thing almost of all nails ever on myself. I love fronds. So I hope you guys like this as much as I do and please share any recreations with me on Facebook or Instagram. I'd love to see them. I love toucans. So share them with me and I will see you in my next video. Bye.